If you want to know everything where it originated from, we can go back to Genesis. And until the great preacher says, under the sun, there is nothing new. So whether it's fashion, whether it's denominations, whether it's traditions, whether it's doctrines, whatever life you must know that you are living, someone lived that kind of life before. You are not the only one. Hallelujah. So we realize that uh, the Bible starts here that uh, Adam knew his wife and then he conceived these boys. Hallelujah. We know by revelation that one was a son of Adam, but the other one we know that he never came through Adam. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But watch the Bible says here. He says, uh, Abel, the brother of Cain. There's something I want to look at right before we proceed. Amen. You know, God has got an amazing attitude. God is always positive. God is always loving. God is always gentle. He gives everyone an opportunity. There's no one who ever lived upon the face of the earth who is living, who will ever live, which God will never give a special attention to. And an opportunity for you to use your free moral agency, the right to choose. Very fair God. So the Bible says when time came for them to offer, Abel's bringing an offering. And God had respect over his offering, but of Cain not. It doesn't stop there. God, when you read further, he advises Cain. He says, go and do like your brother. You're going to be accepted. Look at the heart of God. Look at the attitude of God. Look at the motives of God. And God here is not guessing. He knows that this one is of the wicked one. He knows this is serpent seed. But look at the attitude of God towards the serpent seed check your attitude this morning towards any soul check your attitude this morning towards any human being we must never be great in our own eyes better than yourself great lesson and a great departure this afternoon hallelujah God was not guessing with the originality of this king. He knew exactly his origin and his destination. But look at how he's giving Cain a fair opportunity. He's giving Cain and saying, if you do, God is not a liar. He's not a man. Gave him a chance. You better give another fellow man a chance. Full of mistakes and blunders. Give them a chance. They are trying their level best. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Continue on on this thought. Listen, brother, sister. The thing that distinguished Cain and Abel was revelation. They were both worshippers. They came on the altar. They came providing some substance. But the revelation set them apart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He caught the revelation of the lamb, Abel. But Cain, he went down on the ground because he, never, he had an identity crisis. Doesn't know where he come from, his originality. But you look at Abel, he caught the revelation. There was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Through the blood, we come through fellowship through the blood. So he heard that revelation and he caught it and it pleased God. Worshipping God is receiving something supernatural from God. Then you can start worshipping. You cannot start on the natural and worship a supernatural God. It works this way. It starts on the eternities. It starts on supernatural and working on the natural. Then the natural can express the supernatural in the natural. That's how it works. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, by the grace of God, or this afternoon, you'll ask where we are. We are on a checkup. Revelation checkup. Revelation checkup. When someone is not feeling well, he goes to a doctor. And we don't want to go to any doctor. We don't want a quack doctor, which is an limitation, or, you know, someone who never graduated accordingly. But you want someone, you know, who's authentic. Someone who's been proven, who's got a license, someone who can work on you. Then you go and consult. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something, as much as you consult, the natural doctors, there's a spiritual doctor tonight by the grace of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's going to operate on our revelation tonight. It's a revelation check. What type of revelation you have this morning? Who is God to you? What is God to you? Where does God dwell? Where does God, what's God's nature? Let's check your revelation today. We are in a revelation check this morning. Not what so and so said about God. Not something you've inherited somewhere else. Personal revelation from God. What do you say about this Jesus called Christ? The master asked one day, 
Ah, oh, some men, they say you are this, you are that, and the other. So say, Christ, okay, okay. I hear what other men say. But who do you say I, the son of man, am? They had to account for their revelation of who Jesus Christ is. They had to say to their own mouth and confess and declare, Thou art the son of a living God. He said, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, not flesh and blood, but my heavenly father has revealed this to you. We need a revelation from Elohim. We need a revelation from the almighty God. Not the natural Elohims. Men who's got a birth certificate doesn't qualify outside Jesus Christ to be Elohim. If you are a Bible reader, the Bible says it's got no beginning of days, no end of days. It's got no mother, it's got no father. We can't have a natural Elohim, forget. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why, brother and sister, we need a direct revelation from God. We need God to speak to us supernaturally.